Hello everyone, Rick here. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I did a video. I haven't been doing any very large projects in the garden. It's been quite hot, unbearably so. And when it's not baking hot, we're getting torrential rain. So I haven't been doing too much in the garden other than regular maintenance and cleaning up. And to be sides, during summer, I just like to relax and enjoy all the hard work that I put in during the spring months. So join me on a general garden update as I walk around the yard. Starting in the North Garden, not too much going on over here right now and it was purposely designed that way. This garden um, is supposed to be green and serene for most of the year. So right now it's just about the foliage and right now the stars are the hostas even though they've taken quite a beating from the storms that have passed through, they're still looking nice. I just have a random set of potted plants underneath the magnolia tree. The hummingbird feeder um, has been seeing quite a lot of activity recently. There are about three hummingbirds that come here regularly, two females that kind of share the feeder at the same time, or at least can tolerate each other, and one male um, that they tend to chase away. The really hot and humid weather has caused what seems to be a slight outbreak of southern blight, which is a type of fungus that lives in the soil and can live in the soil for several years. Um, so that's why I have this, this container covering down a hosta that got infected. It started off with just yellowing leaves and which looked like the leaves were drying but we've been getting so much rain I knew that it wasn't due to lack of water and then the leaves started to, to basically just drop off. So when I looked it up I realized it was southern light because there were these small granules up around the base of the, the plant that look sort of like mustard seeds and it's very difficult to get rid of um, but what I read is basically it can't live deeper than two inches below the soil level and it's killed off by freezing temperatures or very hot temperatures and what I read is that in nurseries, how they deal with it is they steam the nursery. But I can't do that here. So what I did, I scraped away most of the topsoil and the mulch. Well, the little bit of mulch and other debris that was here. And then I basically mounded that area up and poured boiling hot water around that area for several times during the week. And I have it covered down so rain doesn't splash the area and spread the fungus. So it seems that it's just limited to this area, well right in the north garden to just this one plant because the other hostas haven't seemed to be infected by the fungus yet. So I'll keep pouring hot water on it every so often. Then when it turns to winter time I'll uncover it, scrape away more of this and dispose the soil 
and hopefully the cold temperatures will kill it. In other parts of the garden I'm dealing with some similar types of wilt or sudden blight so I've done the same thing. I have no idea if it was just in the soil all the time and I stirred it up somehow or if I brought it in on nursery plants. Um, but we'll, I'll show you when we get to the other parts of the garden. Let's head to the front now. So we're at the front of the house now and the butterfly bushes are in full bloom and this month I've had a lot of butterfly activities. Lots of different kinds of swallowtails and monarchs and flotilleries. So I guess July is the time for butterflies. Also these little lime hydrangeas, these limelight hydrangeas are looking gorgeous right now. And they're such a tough plant. This is the third time that I've transplanted these from different parts of the yard. I've actually ran over a few of these, killing them right down to the ground with the lawnmower, but they've come back. And they look so good. I think I might just fill up this whole front area with these hydrangeas. I've been given... Um, I've been thinking a lot about what I want to do in the front of the house. And I think I'm just going to focus on shrubs. Um, they're less maintenance and they look good all year. There's one blooming in almost every season. So I think I'm going to do that. And I really like this color palette, this, the soft lime green and the white. So I think I'm going to try to, to do that in the front of the yard. So the pond, if you remember earlier, I was doing some work on the pond. It never really cleared up, like crystal clear. Um, so I believe that what's happening is just I just have way too many fish um, I don't know how to get rid of them maybe I'll put an ad on Craigslist saying free fish but then I don't know how I'm going to catch them to give them away but I think I just have way too many fish for this um, size pond The plants in the bog filter are looking quite nice. The creeping jennies flowing over the edge quite nicely. The can in the middle is looking great. Um, the water lilies, only one of them seems to be blooming and that's the one over in this corner. It's a kind of peachy orange. But the water isn't clear enough so they're not getting enough sun down to um, the roots. Water lilies need uh, clear water to, to bloom profusely. There's just this random patch of flowers in the front here. Eventually I have to move them to other parts of the yard, but they look really nice. I have to transplant these echinaceas and these lilies. They're white lilies and these brown eyed Susans or black eyed Susans. Just lovely. And they self seeded themselves. I only had one plant of these in front here, but they just scattered all over and they look nice with this. I believe this is an aster, which is a native wild plant. This is also native too. So. I might just take these and scatter them somewhere else around the yard where I don't mow or cut the grass or anything. And here's more limelight hydrangeas. Little limes, they only get to between three and five feet. And then this over here is another butterfly bush. These can get to 10 feet tall, um, but I keep cutting them back. 
in April, I practically cut this down to the ground. Then at the end of May, I cut it again to about waist height. And it's a little over six feet tall now, but it's usually full of butterflies all throughout the day. I added this little bench here under the dogwood tree next to the tropical garden it looks lovely i'm thinking about painting it green and white so the boards are going to be dark green and the the legs and arms are going to be white and i just love how the tropical garden is looking it's very lush i just love how the sun is filtering through all the leaves Castor beans have grown up a lot since the last video. The oleanders are blooming non-stop and they also have a slight fragrance. The cannas have not, well, it did bloom once. Although the flowers are small and red and insignificant, they did bloom once, but they haven't bloomed since. I don't know if it will bloom later on this month. But they don't get as much sunlight here. This tiger eye sumac is looking nice. And if you look at it, this is the view that I have outside of the office window. You can see the contrasting greens. And it's 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 shaping up nicely. I think I'm, I need to add some more like red or burgundy foliage just to give a little bit more contrast to the greens. And over here we have another oleander. The vine in the back that, that got killed is down there, it's coming back. So hopefully next year it'll have some flowers. So we have the oleander here, this castor bean, and this dahlia. It's blooming. I forget the name, but it has a nice light pink bloom. It looked better this morning when I came out. And the grass is a little bit high because I, I didn't feel like cutting the grass this weekend. There's also, there's always next week, I guess, right? One of the elephant ears. Here, because it's next to the tree, it doesn't get that big, but still looks nice. This is my orchid. It put on a lot of new growth on the root tips. You can see here all that little green on the tips of the roots. So hopefully it will bloom next year. The gingers put on a lot of new growth. Let me come from this side so you can see. Yes, so these are the gingers and you can see they've put on some growth. The red um, parts of the leaves are the new growth. So hopefully it'll flower this outside now. There's another elephant here. It's about knee height. It's big and nice. This palm has been a bit disappointing. I don't know if it's because of the spot it's in, it's not getting enough sun or, or what, but it's not going to be in this spot next year. And then on this side is another Kana, Kana Bengal Tiger. Leaves looking nice. Another Oleander, this is, no blooms on it right now. And then below it, it's a scraggly little fern. I know this fern wouldn't have done quite well here. It needs shade and a lot more moisture. And then behind it is a pineapple lily. I planted a few around. Um, I don't think it will bloom this year, but hopefully it survives and you can see it next year. So let's head around to the other side of the pool. Well, the other side of the fence to see the pool garden. 
So we're entering the back of the pool area. So this area gets full sun. And you can see everything looks lush and big. So we have some castor beans, some palms. I believe those palms were on clearance. They aren't hardy, so they'll have to come into the house. Some purple trees. Let's, let's look to the left here. We have some dracenas. We have a, a needle palm. Oh, it's called a needle palm because if you look down here at the base, there are these re really sharp spikes where the fruits of the palm um, grow. So that protects the fruit from getting eaten. And down here we have some coleus, some cannas blooming, some hibiscus. It's the end of the day so all the hibiscus flowers would be closing and getting ready to drop off. It's sad that they only last one day but there are a whole bunch more waiting to open up tomorrow. Some more cannas. This is another type of hibiscus. This is a color rose of Sharon and it's more hedge like. Let's see, the floor is still open. This elephant here. Elephant air here gets a lot more water since it's next to the the runoff from the air conditioner. So we're on the other side of the pool now. And let me get around to the other side because the light is washing out the, the film. Move to the other side of the pool garden so you can get a better view. So the light is, the sunlight is behind me now. You see, these things looking quite lush and nice. The marigolds are looking magnificent with the castor beans growing up in the middle and some other perennials and grasses filling in them filling in in between Let's head outside across the driveway to look at the, the hot garden. So this is coming around the bend on the approach to the hot garden. Sorry if it's very washed out from the sunlight, but I just love this view um, with all the light radiating behind the leaves. So there's this hibiscus. It's not a, oh there's one flower still open. It's not in the hot color um, palette that I'm going for in this garden. You see it's a kind of a pale purplish blue and then the middle is red. And I really, I wasn't going to move it because it's a big chore. But I don't like it at all in this spot so I'm going to take it out. I don't know if I mentioned it in my last video but... I'm going to extend this bed further along till about around here so um, so it have a nice grand um, bed when you come around the driveway so I have killing off the grass with the top and it's it's looking nice these salvias are still blooming. I cut them back so they put on a new flush of flowers. At the front here we have these black-eyed Susans. 
looking fantastic at the back there we have some more canna bengal tiger they're getting tall so i think they are getting ready to flower have some goldenrod tall goldenrod and that doesn't flower till late summer fall we have some more marigolds and some daylilies down here so I'm going to just repeat these plants going all the way down and it should look nice over there is my corn patch um, it has set fruit so the corns are growing but I don't really want to head over there now the grass is kind of tall um, so I'll save that for another video over here I did a mini extension of the hot garden and it took a while for these plants to get settled in so there's a very this red thing is a bee balm and this is another type of um, cone flower I think it's called a swamp coneflower, I believe. And then I have a red hibiscus here. This is the first hibis hardy hibiscus that I got. And below it, another elephant ear. And behind it there was another banana, but it just died. I don't know if it suffered root rot or it had blight or something. Well, let's head across to the cotton candy border. So we're heading into the cotton candy garden now. And you can see that big nice pink hibiscus in the back. It's about tall as I and it's just been blooming non-stop. Down here this variegated comfrey, this yellow and green plant, has settled in nicely. It didn't do too well in the beginning, but I think it has rooted in. And behind it is another dahlia. I think this one is called Pacific Jewel. I haven't been out here deadheading the plants. I should be if I want them to bloom. Um, to have nice big blooms but I just I don't know I just kind of let things do whatever they want at this point because they need they need needed stake here and you see this one has flopped over and it's kind of growing sideways still looks nice so don't need to do that you can see here that I have a lot of areas covered down with pots those are where I all lost plants to root rot or the sudden blight so I gave it the same treatment as I did in as a hosta in the north garden this plant I don't know it I can't remember if I bought it or if it just popped up here but the rabbits were eating it so I caged around it but you can see it just it just started to turn black at the bottom and it's wilting it rained like two days ago none of the other plants around it are wilting so I don't know if this one has the sudden blight as well I, I don't know if it came in on the mulch that I put down but it's really frustrating and then this plant too if you look at it here it's kind of wilting and around the base you see it's starting to well the tips are turning black but I don't know I don't want to wet it because then it might be too much water 
I don't know. I'm just hoping that the thing doesn't spread and kill off all my plants because these plants are supposed to be low maintenance plants. You just plant them because most of them are native. So you just plant them and they kind of take care of themselves. So if that fungus attacks native plants, I don't know what I will do because I can't dig up all the dirt from here. Hopefully winter is cold and it kills, it kills the fungus. Or it will just turn into a shrub garden because they, I read that the fungus doesn't affect woody plants too much. So heading over to the other side of the cotton candy garden. Not much has changed over here. The butterfly bush here is about to go to seed so before it does that I'm going to cut it back because butterfly bush is a little bit controversial because people say it it doesn't really help butterflies other than give the adult butterflies nectar and butterflies need food for their young and also this tree the butterfly bush tends to be invasive in some areas so it has a, the potential to escape my garden and take over um, other wild native forests. But I cut mine back before they go to seed. And also I have lots of other native plants here and I have host plants for all types of butterflies. Um, for the monarchs, we have a lot of milkweed growing wild around here in the ditch coming at the entrance to our house. There's a lot of milkweed down there. We have a lot of, so that's, so that's the larval host for the monarch butterfly. We have a lot of wild cherries, which are a host for swallowtails. We also have purple trees, which is also a host for other types of swallowtails. So that's not really a concern for us. But I don't know, some people really don't like butterfly bushes anymore. This crepe myrtle is looking lovely. The panicles are huge. Another spot where I'm dealing with root rot. This area seems a bit bare. I think I'm going to bring the irises from the front and, and put them in that area. I just haven't gotten around to dividing the irises. And you can see things are starting to look a bit, be, be a, lit, a little bit tired. The garden is starting to look a little bit tired and bedraggled. I think that's the word I was trying to think about. Um, but that's that's how it is this time of the year. And then over here, the rose has a few blooms on it. I've been battling Japanese beetles on all my rose bushes and a few other shrubs and trees that I have. Japanese beetles are relentless. Like, I've, I've killed hundreds, but they just keep coming back. They don't really hurt the plant too much. They just eat the, the flowers and the leaves and it looks ugly. Um, they do it for a few weeks and then they kind of just disappear and go back down into the ground. But they can decimate crops. Um, and of course they attack plants that I love. So I won't be planting any more roses. They also like the hibiscus. They like cherry trees. They like crab apples. So I don't know. I'm just trial and error to see what works and what doesn't but I think that's it for this update um, 
I don't really have any major gardening projects planned so I have to think about what I might make a video on next week so I hope you enjoy this sh short walk through the garden and I'll see you next time okay goodbye